This is where the magic happens. There's little bubbles that are coming off of the of the raspberries. This is our starter culture from last night. We've got a couple tablespoons of honey in here and some fresh picked raspberries from our friend Z's garden. And we mix them up and let them sit overnight and in that time all of the yeast that's living on the surface of the raspberries has come to life. And so this little yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is really going crazy with activity in here now. And we're going to take this starter culture and we're going to add it into our brew from last night. Which smells amazing. Very root beer flavor. We added uh, pedicularis to it last night. That was the final step, was to add the pedicularis, the leafy matter. So we decocted the black birch, the smilax, the yellow dock, the dandelion, the Aurelia nudicollis, and the chaga mushroom. And then at the very last bit, um, when it was cooling down, we added the honey and let the honey dissolve in the hot water. And then the very last, last step was to add the pedicularis and let it steep for a few hours, which it incidentally ended up steeping overnight because it was too hot for us to transfer into the carboy last night and add the yeast. So now we're gonna take that last step and transfer it all over. And then we play the waiting game. So we've got this tiny dinky little dollar store funnel that uh, is kind of a pain in the neck, but it's the best that we've got, so we're gonna go with it. And actually I'm gonna pull the carboy over here because then we can use the stand for a point of leverage. And all we're doing is putting this into a vessel. I mean, you can scale this up or down to any size. Um, if you have a, a larger vessel, you can do hundreds or thousands of gallons, as they do in commercial breweries. Or you could scale it down to something as small as a quart at a time. Um, I really like to do one gallon batches. A gallon is a pretty reasonable amount and uh, pretty manageable. You can fit it on a bookshelf or under your bed. So it's a very compact way of doing things and it's easy to get glass gallon jugs. You can go buy one of those gallon apple juice jugs or um, you can get uh, a gallon of Carlo Rossi and bring it to a party and let your friends drink the Carlo Rossi and then use that jug to make your own brew. And the Carlo Rossi jugs are nice because they're actually five liters so you can really brew a full gallon in that Carlo Rossi jug because you need to leave a little bit of space so that uh, your so that your fermented beverage doesn't overflow into the airlock. really would be nice to have a slightly bigger funnel but we'll work with what we've got the pedicularis keeps clogging up the spout but that's okay <clears throat> and in general I don't tend to strain my meads I let them I let all the uh, plant matter stay inside the primary fermentation vessel.
just because as it ferments, alcohols are going to start to come about. And there's a lot of compounds that are alcohol soluble. So I want to make sure that we get those alcohol soluble compounds. I think it helps it to be a more complete medicine that way or um, helps it to uh, helps us to extract a little more of the magic that these plants have to offer. And getting that plant matter through is where it really comes in handy having a, a bigger funnel because as you can see the works have gotten clogged up a little bit here. We can use this as a poker. But yeah, that's the basic process. We just kind of throw it all. You you make a strong tea. You add honey. You pour it all into a vessel and then you seal it off from the air and the way that we seal it off from the air I'll just go ahead and show you that that way you don't have to suffer through this whole transfer process with me the way that we're gonna seal it off from the air is with one of these little devices they call this an airlock and Basically what it is, you've got a tube that's coming up there, then you've got this cap that sits over top of it, and there are little air exchange points right here, so that when the gas builds up to a certain point, this cap will rise up, and the bubbles will be able to escape from these little holes. So air can get out, but no air can get in. And that's the whole trick of it. Um, it allows the bacteria to breathe without allowing any other bacteria to get in. Because there are certain bacteria that have an affinity for, or have an appetite for alcohol. In particular, uh, Acetobacter is one that we're all pretty familiar with whether we realize it or not because acetic acid is one of the most common vinegars that we find around so if that acetobacter gets into our fermentation after the Saccharomyces has started producing alcohols if, uh, if acetobacter gets in there then it's going to turn the alcohol into vinegar which could be desirable depending on what it is that you're going for in this case we're going for a wine so we want the alcohol rather than the vinegar and this is going to prevent those um, bacteria, those vinegar forming bacteria from uh, from being able to get in but it will also allow the Saccharomyces to breathe and exhale as it goes through its metabolic processes because these bacteria they're very much like us you know they need to eat they need to breathe they need to reproduce and um, so we want to help to facilitate all of those processes but if we were to seal this jar off entirely the pressure would build and build and build and at some point either the top would pop off or the glass would break because the pressure would get too great so this allows the pressure to be released and the gas to be exchanged without um, allowing any contaminant bacteria into our uh, mixture or into our brew. So yeah, that's the long and short of it. And um, if you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook, Eric Joseph Lewis. Um, I also highly recommend getting Sandor Katz's book, The Art of Wild Fermentation. And he has another shorter book called Wild Fermentation. Um, 
there's a lot of good resources online. You can just search how to make wine and there are all kinds of recipes available there. But it's really just as simple as taking a sweet liquid and adding a culture of Saccharomyces and sealing it off. And then you'll end up with uh, your own alcohol, your own homemade alcohol. So good luck. Peace world.